my roommate uh, was headed somewhere for the weekend. For those of you that have ever been in a dorm room, when you have the dorm room to yourself, that's a really nice weekend. Uh, not that you don't like your roommate, it's just kind of nice. And so I had this incredible plan. My plan was, I've heard that you're supposed to take a thoughtful hour in prayer, right? And so I made a decision that I was going to take this time where my roommate was gone to be alone with God. I slept on the top bunk. He was on the bottom bunk, but he was gone. So I had the bottom bunk. I kneeled down on it, and I'm there praying. And it was that great, wonderful thing. And, you know, Jesus came down and was right there with me. No, that's what happened was I was praying away. And I don't know how much longer it was later. There was drool running down my face that woke me up. Have you ever had that where you're praying and you're going to spend this time with God and the next thing you know, you've drifted off to sleep? If you haven't, it might happen to you. When they asked me if I would come and talk about prayer, I was like, what can I share with you that you don't already know about prayer? How many of you guys have grown up going to Sabbath school since you were a little kid? Okay, how many of you have at least two or three years of Adventist Christian education? Okay, so you guys are already experts on prayer, right? You have probably prayed more than most people in the entire world have prayed just by the fact that you have grown up. I mean, just counting Sabbath mornings. So I thought that what would happen and what we should do is we should give you a quiz. So do you have your smartphones with you? You get to use them in church today. Isn't that exciting? Pull out your phone, and I want you to go to kahoot.it. Okay, thank you. Kahoot.it. It says do kahoot.com, but go to kahoot.it, and then there's going to be, when you anybody there yet? It should look like this. There's going to be, in just a second, a number that um, we're, they're going to put up there. It's uh, right at the start. There you go. And see that? 797606. So let's type that in. Actually, I made it so you couldn't do that. It puts the names in for you. Because, um, well, I used to be a youth pastor. Okay. And so my nickname, uh, oh, well, you know what? I think it didn't trust me on that one. So put in appropriate. Okay, good. So we've got some people there already. Not me. Oh, good. All right. We're, I'm glad not me is here. All right. We'll give you about 30 more seconds. Well, five more seconds. Everybody in. Does anybody need more of a time? Oh, I heard a, I heard a wait. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, we will wait. We will wait. Are you in, young lady, over there? Okay, good. I'm just making sure. My wife is here, so be on good behavior. I'll, I'll try and be on good behavior, okay? Does anybody else, everybody good? Not yet. I might get Contagious Faith up here to, to lead us in another song while we get everybody ready. Everybody good? There's another wait? Okay, good. We will wait because it's worth it. We're going to have some fun with this. It's only five, it's only five questions, but um, we'll have some fun. Anybody else? If you're good, say amen. amen. All right, that was good enough. All right, let's hit start, Andre. There's 30 seconds to answer the questions. Join my clan. Okay, we're joining your clan. Okay. Are you ready? And here we go. Okay. I believe prayer is important, and you're going to answer. Strongly agree, agree, disagree. I believe prayer is important. Okay. All right, let's go to the next question. The amount of time each day I spend in prayer. I don't pray. Zero to five minutes. Five to ten minutes. 
over 10 minutes. Oh, good, good, good. Okay. All right, let's go to the next one. I believe prayer is important, but I am not sure how or why to pray. Agree, kind of agree, disagree because prayer is not important, or disagree because prayer is important and I pray regularly. And, oh, by the way, I won't be tracking your answers, um, basically because I can't. I don't know who you are. So that's the beauty of anonymous. We got 27 answers and 7, 6, 5. All right. Oh, good, good. That's, that's good. Okay. Um, let's go to the next question. My parents pray with me. If you are a parent, you answer it as a parent. You pray with your children. Okay? Every day, sometimes, rarely, I can't remember when. Time's up. And let's see. Okay? Good, good. Well, all right, let's go to the last question. I pray with others. Okay, often, occasionally, not very often, praying with others makes me uncomfortable. Okay, very good. All right, let's go back to the regular slides. Thank you for your input. We're going to come back to some of this. Now, since you've already participated, here's the next question for you. And this is not rhetorical. Rhetorical means you don't answer. Okay, so you will answer. What is prayer? Now, I want you to look at your favorite fresh, uh, best friend who you sat with in Sabbath school, and I want you to tell them what you think prayer is. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to go three, two, one, and we're going to be quiet, okay? So when you hear me say three, two, one, we'll be quiet. But until then, I want you to talk with your the people around you. It can be one or two or five people. I don't care. What is prayer? Go. All right, three, two, one, okay, and we're back. Who would like to share what your definition of prayer is? Going once. Who would like to share? Yes, please. Ooh, that, that sh Webster should be here today, writing that down. A vulnerable conversation with the Lord. Did I say that right? I like that. Anybody else? All right, nobody's ready to try and trump that one. That was good. Okay, we'll go on. I want us to look at several prayers. Would that be okay with you? I looked up, and I, 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 my understanding is there's 650 prayers recorded in the Bible. I, I didn't have time this week to look at all 650. Sorry about that, guys. But I'm bringing four of them to you. One of them is one that became very popular a couple years ago. Have you ever heard of the prayer of Jabez? See, that book came out about the time you were born, probably, maybe before. And it was the best seller on the Christian market, and here's why. Now, listen, this is the context, because when we look at the Bible, we always want to know the context. Does that make sense? The context is what comes around the passage. And Jabez writes this, or says this, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. Now, that's pretty cool. You know what that means, right? He was better, okay? He was a better kid than his brothers. But his mother had named him Jabez. Now, that's not such a bad name, is it? How would you like it? Okay? And I'll pick on you because I don't know you, but I'll pick on you. What if, and she's like, oh, no, why did I come to Sabbath school this morning? It's okay. It's not bad. What if your mother called you pain? 
You would not like it. I agree with you. I would not like that. Hey, come here, pain. Come here, come here, pain. And all you know, you're out there playing with your friends, okay? And your mother's and hey, pain, come here. That sounds dumb, right? Pain. Would you name your cat pain? No, I don't think you name your cat or your dog pain, even though sometimes they are. But she says, Jabez was she caused her pain in childbirth, and so she named him pain. And here's his prayer. You ready? It starts off like this. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, oh, that you would bless me. Now, we like this prayer so far, right? Come on. When you cry out to God, do you say, oh, Lord, please don't bless me? No, because when you're, when you're getting ready to, to, to uh, take uh, Mr. Shepherd's test, right, you are praying, Lord, bless me to remember what I may have studied, what I may have heard in class, and definitely what I did study, right? Okay, so we were, we're saying, I, I, I like this, this prayer so far. Would you bless me? Then he says, and enlarge my territory. Now think about that. You guys are going, I'm not so sure about enlarge my territory. Let's try this. How about enlarge my bank account? That's what enlarging your territory is. We, anybody want to pray that with me today? Lord, can I ha please have a little bigger? Oh, good, I got a couple. How, how about this? Um, you know that you, you're, you're driving your parents' uh, hand-me-down car. Dear God, would you bless me and enlarge my car? Not that it's bigger, but that it's nicer. Anybody, you know, you don't want to drive your mom's minivan anymore. You, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, you don't know. You guys have those Porsches. I forgot. Um, and then it says, let your hand be with me. Now, we want God's hand to be with us, right? Because God's hand always brings blessing, right, and, and strength and power. And then it says, and keep me from harm. We, when we get in the, the bus, when you guys are driving with Chisholm Trail Academy, you're praying for safety, right? And then it says, and it, it, I don't like this translation because it's not accurate. It says that I might be free from pain. Now, I like that concept. How many of us want to have pain? None of us, right? We all would like to be free from pain. But actually, the Hebrew is better than that. It says, keep me from being a pain. Did you catch that? His name was what? He's saying, Lord, don't let me live up to my name. Ooh, isn't that kind of cool? Now, this is a cool. And, and, and you want to know how it, the story ends on this one? Watch this. And God granted his wish. Now, that's pretty, pretty cool, isn't it? Wouldn't, wouldn't that be cool to, to know that God just granted your wish? If you prayed and boom, God, God gave it to you, that'd be cool, wouldn't it? So let me ask you this question. Why is it that you pray? I want you to talk with your neighbor for just, I'm only going to give you about 10 seconds. Why is it or when is it that you pray? You ready? Is that question clear? Talk, talk amongst yourself. When do you pray? All right, I warned you it would be fast. Three, two, one. Okay. So who wants to share when is it that you pray? Come on, the easy one. Before our meals, right? Oh, okay, I stole your answer. When do you pray? Yes. Okay, you like Paul's pray without ceasing. I love that. What else? When else do you pray? I hope you pray before exams, right? You pray when somebody's hurting. Okay, let's go on. I don't think you've probably ever heard of this prayer. Has anybody here heard of Agur? I had never heard of this guy, and I'd read Proverbs a number of times. This one is kind of cool. Um, I know it's kind of small up there, so I'll, I'll try and read it for you. This is the context, and you're going to wonder when I write this, or when I read this, why in the world we would look at this prayer? Agor says this, I am the most ignorant. If you look at the New King James Version, it says I am the most stupid of all men. My mother didn't let me use the word stupid, so I'm going with the different version, okay? I don't have man's understanding. I've not learned wisdom. I have not knowledge of the Holy One. Who has gone up to heaven or come down? 
Who has gathered the wind of, in the hollow of his hands? Who has wrapped up the waters in his cloak? Uh, who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and the name of his son? Tell me if you know. And, and so what he's saying is basically, who, who knows like God? And then he says, every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his words or he will rebuke you and prove you a liar. Now, I, I want to suggest to you that he may not be as ignorant as he says. Listen to this. Here's what he asks for. And this is why it's not that popular of a prayer, but it's a powerful one. He says, two things I ask of you, please don't refuse me, them to me before I die. So we're looking at some different prayers now. Agor is praying this. He says, and I'm, I'm good with this one, keep falsehood and lies far from me. Falsehood is that um, you, you don't mean to lie. It's just like you give the wrong impression, okay? And a lie is blatantly not the truth. And so he's saying, keep me from, none of us like to have somebody lie to us or give us false information, right? So he's saying, don't let that happen to me. Now, this one is where I would like to stop. If I could put a period in the sentence, I would be right here. Give me neither poverty. I would take one word out of it. I would say, give me not poverty. Anybody here want to pray that prayer with me? Lord, we don't want to be poor, right? But listen to what he says. Don't give me poverty nor riches. Now, this prayer got a lot harder right now, didn't it? Don't give me riches. Give me only my bread, the daily bread. And then he says this. Otherwise, I might have too much and disown you and say, who is the Lord? Or I might become poor and steal and thus dishonor the name of the Lord our God. Did you catch that? That's a pretty powerful prayer, isn't it? What he's praying and what he's asking for is contentment with what God has given him. All right, let's go on. Here's a cool uh, thing. It says prayer is the opening of the heart to God as to a friend. It's from Steps to Christ, page 93. I like that. Prayer is like talking to your friend. So I want to go into another one. I want to look at a little different one. And this one's a little deeper, and I'm going to have to go quickly here because this one's tough. Um, there was a guy named David. And, you know, we, we like to sing only a boy named David. You know, David and Goliath, that's cool. And, and David becomes king, and that's really cool, and, and all that kind of stuff. But David one year decided not to go to battle. And he looks over the wall, and um, we'll keep it PG-13. He sees a lady bathing, and he already knows who she is. Yeah, the Bible says he sins, but it's one of his, one of his top bodyguards' wife. I guarantee he knew who she was. And he invites her in, and there's a baby on the way, and he has his loyal bodyguard killed in battle. And he thinks to himself, I got away with it. And then there's this little prophet. We don't know very much about him. We just know his name was Nathan. And Nathan comes in and has story time with the king. He tells him this story about this rich guy that had all these sheep. And, and he comes to this poor guy who has one little lamb that's a pet for the family. And he takes that pet and he literally kills it and provides it for a guest that comes to visit him. And David is so caught up with children's story that he looks at Nathan and he says, tell me who this guy is and I will personally deal with it. And Nathan who could have lost his life over this, looks at David and says, you the man. And David, all of a sudden, his pointing accusatory finger points back at himself, and he's crushed. And he writes this incredible psalm, Psalm 51, and it says, have mercy on me, O God. Have you ever really blown it? Maybe it's with your significant other. Maybe it's with your parents. Maybe it's with your boss. Maybe it's in a class. And have you ever walked out to your car and gotten in the car and said, Lord, why in the world am I alive? Now, I know that probably doesn't happen at CTA or Keene High School. Um, where I grew up, it did happen. And we asked ourselves some tough questions. And then it says, have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. 
Wash away all my iniquity. Cleanse me from my, my sin. For I know my transgression. My sin is before me. And my mouth, I declare your praise. It goes on, verse 7. Cleanse me with hyssop. Now, we don't usually talk like that because I don't know the last time you used the word cleanse. And I don't even think you know what hyssop is. It's a way of cleaning. And I will be clean. Wash me and I'll be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let my bones that you have crushed rejoice. Did God crush his bones? No, what happened was God pointed out the sin in his life and it was convicted. H have you ever been convicted by God that something you're doing isn't right? Man, I don't know if you've ever prayed for forgiveness, but if you do, Psalm 51 is the one to go to. Hide your faith from my sins. Blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Grant me a willing spirit to sustain me, and then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners may turn, their ba turn back to you. I like this one. Prayer is the key in the hand of faith to unlock heaven's storehouses where treasured the boundless resources of the omnipotent. I, I, I don't know if you know much about prayer. Um, I know we're getting out of time, but I got to tell you a story. I was a pastor in St. Petersburg, Florida, and you know how you collect stuff Pathfinders does for, for uh, Thanksgiving baskets? We had all this canned food and stuff, and my, my uh, senior pastor sent me out to this little market. He wanted fresh carrots and fresh celery to go in the baskets. We were making 16 baskets to give away. That's not that many, but it was a number for that church. And I went to this market, and I, I asked the guy, I said, you know, we're going to give out these baskets. Would you be willing to donate a few? We'll buy some. And the guy was really a grump, and he just said no. I said, well, would you be give, willing to give us a reduced price? He said, did you not hear me? I said no. I went, whoa. And so I counted out. And you know how you go to the grocery store, and sometimes they'll ask, well, how many apples do you have, or how many do you have? And they just they take your word for it. Well, I walked up there with 16 carrots, bags of carrots, 16 bags of, you know, stalks of celery. I walked up there. I got to his little register, and he didn't ask me. He counted each one. He asked me, and he said, I said, 16. He counted, and he counted one, two, and he counted out loud right in front of me, each one of them. He was just being, you know, kind of mean. And sure enough, there was 16, and there was 16. And so I, I paid him. I got him. I went back to the church. And as soon as we were making the, ba the baskets, the church secretary came over and said, hey, we just got a call. We need another one. And so I told my group leaders, I said, listen, we have 16 carrots and 16 um, celery, and um, we're just going to make, you know, you just you put the 16 in, and when you get to the 17th, don't worry about putting carrots. When you get to the 16th, don't put the celery in. Put it So they'll get either celery or carrots, Okay. And, and one of the kids said, well, let's just pray over it. And I'm like, yeah, okay, well, what's prayer going to do over it? But, yeah, we prayed. And, you know, you, you just sort of half-hearted, yeah, God bless us, you know, bless the people that are going to get this and that kind of stuff. And so my, my, the kid that was putting it put it in, and he got to the end, and, and he said, where's the 17th uh, uh, box? And I said, well, I, 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 they're all right here. And he went back, and he said, well, yeah, but I, I, got 16, I, I got 17 carrots. There's one in each one. Okay, and, and the one right behind him was doing the celery, and, and they walked there, and they said, uh, where's the 17th box? And I'm, I'm telling you, that grumpy guy and myself had counted, and, and I don't know how prayer works all the time, but I know that when we ask God to bless, he blesses in some really unique ways. And, and I know we're out of time, but I want you to think for just a second. Will you pause for a second and think, when have you experienced an answered prayer? Can you remember a time when God has answered your prayer? How did it make you feel? Were you like on a cloud? You couldn't wait to tell somebody? Do you know what I'm talking about? If you were praying that um, she would um, accept your invitation to, is it Southern Shadows still, the, the big banquet at CTA? And, and she said yes, I guarantee you told a couple of your friends, Right? And if he was the right one and he asked you to the banquet, did you keep it quiet? I mean, I, 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 I can 
we better go on. One last one. You guys know this prayer. Can I break this one down for you? If you're looking for a way to pray, let me see, use this as a model. This is what Jesus said. Our Father in heaven, it's recognizing the Lordship of God. And then it says, holy is your name. If you want to do a cool word study, look up the names of God in Scripture and what they mean. Really, really powerful. Holy is your name. Recognizing the holiness of God is part of our prayer life. And then it says, your kingdom come. When was the last time you prayed for God's kingdom? I, I, I have a confession to make. Uh, I was a little young, younger than some of you. My freshman year in high school, uh, I wanted my driver's license. And I said, Lord, um, I really want you to come, but I'd really like you to wait till I get my driver's license because I was really afraid that in heaven, you know, there's no talk of cars there. And so I didn't know if we'd be driving. And I wanted, that was a dumb prayer. Um, but I want God's kingdom to come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When was the last time you asked God to give you something, your daily bread, whatever it is? When was asked, the last time you asked for forgiveness? When was the last time you asked God to give you grace so you could forgive? When was the time when we asked God to lead us so we are, don't go into temptation? And then we pray for God's kingdom. Four prayers, different. One of them is asking God to bless us. One of them is asking God to help us to be content. One of them is asking for forgiveness. And the other one is the one Jesus uh, invited us to pray, which is kind of a holistic prayer. How do we deal with this? The way we deal with this, um, I, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever prayed and God not answered your prayer? This is where it gets hard. I had a, a lady that was a member in my church in the Florida Keys. She prayed for her husband for 19 years. 19 years. And he finally accepted Jesus. Have you prayed for something for 19 years? Daniel prayed for 13 years between Daniel chapter 7, I mean chapter 8 and Daniel chapter 9 where God answers. I'm going to ask that you guys consider one more tough question. While we hear the rain, it's pretty cool, isn't it? At least we're inside. If we treated our friends the way we treat God, would we have any friends? If we're supposed to talk to God as a friend, I, I want to share with you one last story. Andrew, my son, was born and Jeannie was really tired and I can remember distinctly one night she was sleeping and I had the bottle and I took him out of the crib and I took him in we had this overstuffed chair and I told you I had been feeling guilty about falling asleep talking to God and Andrew was in the in my arm and I had the bottle and he's falling asleep in my arm and yeah, I know you're not parents, but it's one of the coolest feelings is to have a kid fall asleep in your arms. And as he's asleep in my arms, I distinctly remember just that sense of God saying, you know, when you fall asleep in my arms, I don't get mad at you. I feel just like you do right here. So some practical pray. If you fall asleep, it's okay. I start my day before I get out of bed. I say, Lord, before my fleet, feet touch the floor, I want to know more, you more. That's my prayer. And then I spend some time with him. If it helps, write down your prayers. If it helps, sing your prayers. Do you have the same conversation with your friends every day? Don't have the same conversation with God every day. Let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, your disciples came to you and asked, teach us to pray. And we're about 2,000 years later, and I'm asking that you would teach us to pray. Teach us to listen as much as we talk to you. In Jesus' name, amen.